of the Mohawk Road Ramp Municipal Class Environmental Assessment Public Information Center number three. So in summary, my name is David Sinke. I'm the project manager for WSP and I'll be presenting uh, the uh, an update to this study to you today. Uh, to begin with, what is this study about? So the city of Hamilton initiated the additional access to Brantford bound Highway 403 class environmental assessment study in 2013 to determine the feasibility of a westbound access ramp to Highway 403 in Ancaster. Since that time, an extension to the third westbound lane from Southcote Road to Highway 6 has been considered in the extended study area shown in the figure below. The goals and objectives of the study are to determine the operational and geometric feasibility of a westbound on-ramp to Highway 403, assess the limitations and impact of the proposed ramp on Highway 403 operations and future plans, and to consider and assess extending a third lane or a truck climbing lane from Southcote Road to Highway 6. So this graphic demonstrates or illustrates uh, the study process and where we are in the study process. So the study process is a five phase process. We are currently completing phase three, which is the assessment of design alternatives. And we are presenting public information center number three. The purpose of this public information center is to review, review key aspects of PIC1 from March 2014 and PIC2 from June 2014 to present the evaluation of design alternatives for the proposed Mohawk Road ramp and truck climbing lane, to present the preliminary preferred plan for the proposed Mohawk Road ramp and truck climbing lane, to present the results of technical studies, to discuss potential impacts and mitigation measures, and to collect public input about the proposed ramp design. We encourage you to please submit your comments to the project team by July 31st, 2024. In summary, uh, the first public information center, PIC1, was held in March 2014, followed by a second PIC in June 2014. The purpose of PICs 1 and 2 was to introduce the study, outline the Class EA process and study schedule, review background information and existing conditions, present the problems and opportunities and alternative solutions, discuss the design process and preliminary design considerations and constraints, present design alternatives and preliminary preferred design concept and obtain community feedback. Several key themes emerged from the PICs. This includes the following. Uh, the ramp at Highway 403 westbound off Mohawk Road is needed and should not have been removed. Uh, there is inadequate room for a ramp at Mohawk Road. The Brantford bound access at Gulf, Gulf Links Road should be the solution carried forward. Garner Road needs to be widened and could be used to access Highway 403 westbound. North Ancaster has easy access via McNiven to Gulf Links and the link westbound. And Southcote to West Garner West would allow access to Highway 403 westbound. Each of these comments was reviewed by the study team and considered as the project moved forward. So several problems and opportunities were identified uh, through the study process. Uh, these are the following. A Brantford bound ramp from Mohawk Road to Highway 403 was removed when the Highway 403 link, Lincoln Alexander Parkway interchange was constructed. Removal of the Brantford bound ramp has left a missing link in access to and from Ancaster. Residents have requested that the Brantford bound ramp be placed, be placed due to increased traffic demands. So that's to be replaced due to increased traffic demands on Wilson Street and the Ancaster core. Therefore, there is a need to provide an additional Brantford bound ramp to improve access to Highway 403 and relieve traffic on Wilson Street.
So several alternative solutions were considered. Alternative solutions represent reasonable means of addressing the problems and opportunities. The following alternative solutions were considered for the study. Alternative one, do nothing. Alternative two, Brantford bound access at Mohawk Road. So this alternative would improve access to Highway 403 by adding a Brantford bound ramp from Mohawk Road to Highway 403. Alternative three, Brantford bound access at Main Street, improve access to Highway 403 by adding a Brantford bound ramp from Main Street to Highway 403. Alternative four, Brantford bound access at Gulf Links Road, improve access to Highway 403 by adding a Brantford bound ramp from Gulf Links Road to Highway 403. And alternative five, other modes of transportation, introduce or enhance programs and facilities that promote the use of other modes of transportation, such as transit and active transportation. Each of these five alternatives was evaluated based on several factors, including technical, natural, cultural, social, economic, and economic environments. And the preferred alternative based on this evaluation as illustrated in this chart was alternative two, Brantford bound access at Mohawk Road. The alternative solutions were assessed and how they would address the problems and opportunities and the constraints identified in the early stages of the study. The assessment was used to identify the preferred alternative solutions for which design alternatives were developed. A combination of the following alternatives is recommended as the preferred solution. Alternative two, improve access to Highway 403 by adding a Brantford bound ramp from Mohawk Road to Highway 403. And alternative five, introduce or enhance programs and facilities that promote the use of other transportation, modes of transportation, such as transit and active transportation. So uh, several alternative means of implementing the preferred design designs uh, were considered. Uh, there were several technical considerations with respect to the geometry of the ramp and the preferred geometry was determined to be a direct spiral uh, as well as a parallel lane design. And these are rather technical descriptions of what is really a, a quite a standard and um, typical lane or, or ramp design in Ontario, which most people would be quite familiar with. And this figure uh, illustrates the preferred design uh, extending from Mohawk Road uh, towards Brantford uh, uh, and in, in a westerly direction uh, from Mohawk Road and illustrating the technical technical um, features which I just described and showing a merge uh, from the ramp from the link, uh, a merge of the ramp from the link like an Alexander Parkway westbound with the Brantford bound ramp from Mohawk Road uh, and then subsequently merging with the 403 lanes. So another graphic which just shows where we are at with the design process. So we have uh, identified design considerations and constraints. Uh, We've designed an exit ramp from Mohawk Road, and we've designed the Mohawk Road entrance ramp to the Lincoln um, to link the Highway 403 Brantford bound ramp. Further studies were completed, which are the focus of PIC3, which uh, in, which include technical studies in support of the design of the truck climbing lane. Uh, design for the truck climbing lane extension and a preliminary design, which is a combination of all design components in developing a preliminary plan for the Mohawk Road ramp. 
So in terms of additional study, studies which have been completed, a stage one archaeological assessment report was completed for the original project study area from Mohawk Road to Southcote Road. The stage one archaeological assessment indicated that portions of the original study area retain archaeological potential. Um, a stage two archaeological study will be completed in the detailed design phase prior to disturbance to any areas that retain archaeological potential. The extended study area, uh, Highway 403 right of way from Southcote Road to Highway 6, was extensively altered during the initial highway construction and does not retain archaeological potential. And so, therefore, within that section of the project, no further archaeological assessment is required. A stormwater management or drainage study was also completed as part of the study. Uh, key recommendations based on this assessment include for the post development condition, so that's uh, following construction of the ramp and truck climbing lane, four culverts will be required new culverts A and B, and existing culvert C, and replacement culvert D. Uh, and it's culvert D, which is shown in the graphic to the right. Implementation of enhanced grass swales with check dams are required to fulfill the stormwater management control requirements for the study, for the project. A natural environmental study was also completed. Uh, the key findings include that the Ancaster Creek East tributary serves as direct fish habitat downstream or northwest of Highway 403. However, Ancaster Creek West tributary does not provide direct fish habitat. The Tiffany Creek contributes to direct fish habitat downstream. There are three woodlots within the study area with a fourth woodlot at the intersection of South Coat Gulf Links, which has been cleared for a private development. Uh, and areas such as the woodlot at Hamilton Gulf and Country Club within the study area serve a significant wildlife habitat. And this map, this graphic shows some of the key in natural environmental features. Um, it shows the woodlot in this area at the Hamilton Gulf and Country Club, uh, the Ancaster Creek tributary uh, draining off to the west, and the Tiffany Creek uh, draining to the north and, and to the west and crossing through the interchange. Climate change uh, is also an important aspect of each and every uh, city and MTO project. And it's and for this project, uh, it has been considered as well. Uh, several project-based supporting actions are being taken. Construction best practices will be followed in accordance with MTO and city specifications. New storm drainage infrastructure will be designed <clears throat> considering increased intensity storm events per MTO climate change criteria to minimize increased, increased risk of flooding and associated possible damage to roadway infrastructure, including washouts due to climate change. Stormwater management, the stormwater management strategy will consider increased uh, intensity storm events due to climate change per MTO's climate change criteria. And vegetation removal will be minimized to the degree possible. A tree preservation plan will be prepared in the detailed design phase and implemented in construction. So specifically with regard to the truck climbing lane, three alternatives were considered. The first alternative involved widening on the west side of Highway 403 south of Southcote Road with a must exit at Highway 405, at the Highway 406 on ramp. The second alternative uh, in, includes or uh, con, uh, entails widening on the west side south of Southcote Road but with the truck climbing lane terminating or merging before the Highway 6 on-ramp. And the third alternative involves widening towards the median south of Southcote Road with a must exit at the Highway 6 on-ramp. 
Various factors were considered in evaluating these three alternatives. Uh, these include socioeconomic factors, including impacts to private property, uh, community effects, including noise, air quality, and lighting, compatibility with existing and future land use, and consistency with planning policies and directions. In terms of natural environment, uh, potential to impact fish and fish habitat was considered, as well as the potential to impact significant natural features and areas, and the potential to impact wildlife species, wildlife habitats, and species at risk. In terms of cultural environment, the potential to impact archaeological resources was considered, as well as the potential to impact cultural heritage resources. And with respect to technical considerations, traffic safety and operations, geometry, utilities, emergency services, constructability and construction costs were considered. So similarly to the previous evaluation presented, um, these three options were evaluated and the preferred alternative was determined to be alternative three, widening towards the median south of Southcote Road with a must exit on highway uh, at the Highway 406 on-ramp. And the predominant reason for the preference for this uh, alternative is that it uh, most of the work is being done towards the median away from natural areas and residential land use. So it is pushing the work further from those sensitive areas and thus resulted in lower impacts to the various relevant criteria. This slide presents a typical cross section for the preferred alternative. The top cross section, which is a slice through the roadway, shows the two existing lanes, as well as the west shoulder and the median shoulder. It shows the offset to the center line of the median, it shows the existing steel beam guide rail, the existing edge of pavement is along this line. The bottom cross section shows the widening that will be required in order to provide three lanes of traffic. Uh, three, two 3.75 meter lanes will be provided along with one 3.5 meter lane. There will be a 1.5 meter shoulder constructed towards the median. The existing 2.71 meter shoulder on the outside or on the shoulder side will be maintained. The existing steel beam guide rail will be maintained on the shoulder side. On the median side, new steam steel beam guide rail will need to be constructed. Um, there will need to be some excavation and placement of granular prior to padding and paving of the freeway in order uh, to complete the work. This drawing shows uh, the preferred design. And I'll just briefly flip to a separate drawing to show this in more detail. So this is Mohawk Road crossing Highway 403. This is the existing westbound ramp from the Lincoln Alexander Parkway. And this is the new ramp, uh, which doesn't exist today, the new ramp which is proposed to be constructed from Mohawk Road to Brent for Brent bound 403. So that lane, along with the lane from the link westbound, will merge and then extend under golf links and then merge with the three lanes of Highway 403. And then uh, at present, the third lane on Highway 403 drops and it becomes two lanes, but that third lane will be extended through to the west towards Highway 6. Oops. Um, under Southcote, 
And as it passes under South Coat, there's there are some constraints with the concrete piers which are holding up the bridge structure. It'll squeeze through those, and then it'll, it, in order to do that, it will uh, uh, need to be widened. As I've shown on the cross sections, the freeway will need to be, the highway will need to be widened into the median. And that median widening will be maintained as long as possible. So that's essentially what uh, the highway, or sorry, option three, alternative three entailed was maintaining the widening as long as possible into the median. And by widening into the median, we're avoiding uh, widening on the shoulder side. In other words, we're minimizing the impacts along the shoulder side from South Coast to Highway 6. Um, until we get to Highway 6, at which point we need to curve back to match the uh, existing cross section or the existing lanes at Highway 6. So one lane, the right lane, will need to exit at Highway 6, and the other two lanes will continue to Brantford. So as part of the study, we con considered potential impacts and mitigation me measures. So I'll just briefly summarize each of these uh, potential impacts. So in terms of property, no property, no private property, no property will be required. All work will be contained within existing uh, public rights of way. A noise study is being completed uh, to determine uh, whether or not there will be potential impacts with respect to noise. This, the results of the noise study will be available uh, for the Public Information Centre on J June 27th and will be available online on the final version of the PIC slides, PIC presentation. Uh, a noise study will be made available, uh, which can be um, referred to and which can be made available uh, to answer any questions which members of the public may have with respect to potential noise impacts. With respect to air quality, uh, no further studies are warranted. Standard construction operational constraints uh, will be followed in order to minimize and mitigate any construction related air quality issues. With respect to utilities, which includes um, hydroelectric, bell, gas, and any other utility services, a further study will be completed, uh, Sue study known as a sub or a subsurface utility engineering investigation will be completed at the detailed design phase, and potential impacts to utilities will be confirmed at that time. With respect to soil management or material management. Uh, all soil management will com be completed uh, in accordance with provincial regulations and MTO specifications. Uh, throughout the duration of construction, monitoring of construction will be completed by qualified inspection staff uh, reporting back to the city of Hamilton. With respect to archeology, span a stage two archeological investigation will be completed for the uh, ramp area to the north of Gulf Links Road or South Coat Road, so Mohawk Road to South Coat Road. With respect to cultural heritage, no cultural heritage impacts have been identified. Uh, we are continuing to consult with First Nations and any uh, issues or concerns or suggestions raised by various First Nations will be uh, incorporated, considered and incorporated as needed. With respect to the natural environment, uh, typical special provisions will be, or contract provisions will be included in the contract for construction, including erosion and sedimentation control, spill prevention and response, work zone delineation and dust control. With respect to aquatic habitat, the contractor will be required to abide by uh, the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry in Water Timing Window 
uh, temporary flow passage and fish salvage. With respect to vegetation, tree protection fencing will be erected and the Hamilton tree bylaws will be followed. Uh, all clearing must occur outside the uh, breeding, bird, nesting, and bat roosting windows, which are uh, time of year constraints during which uh, these species are nesting. So the contractor will be required to avoid those times. Uh, and with respect to wildlife, uh, clearing must occur outside of bird nesting, bat roosting windows, as mentioned, and wildlife exclusion fencing will be erected to delineate the work zone. So we've come to the end of the presentation. Uh, the intention is that after this public information center, uh, any comments received will be reviewed and a formal response will be provided. There'll be certainly an opportunity to have further conversation if desired. Uh, we'll be incorporating any revisions and finalizing the preliminary plan uh, for the project. Uh, we will be preparing an environmental study report which is a written document which uh, delineates the decision-making process and recommend recommendations of the Class EA. And then following review and acceptance by agencies, the uh, environmental study report will be filed for a public 30-day uh, public review period. And we uh, encourage anyone who is interested to visit the study website and to please provide your input by mail or email to either the project manager at the City of Hamilton, Steve Malloy, or myself, David Sinke, project manager with WSP. Thank you very much.